Hey guys, it's Dan Radkowicz. I just wanted to put this quick video out here. I spoke with Ryan Anthony of Ryan Anthony's Heating and Air Conditioning this morning uh, because I was seeing all these comments on a lot of the uh, community pages and we've been getting inquiries from our customers and, and talking to customers about uh, with the cold temperatures that are out there right now and what we're gonna start experiencing over the next couple of days. Um, people are putting their heat on like 74 degrees but their house isn't warming up past 69, 70 degrees and, and people are concerned why. Um, and I wanted to speak to an expert and kind of find out what is causing that. So I spoke with Ryan Anthony and um, I hope you guys enjoy. Take care, stay warm. In temperatures like this, you're asking a lot of your home and your heating system to change from if it's negative eight to get 68 degrees in the house. It's a huge swing. So now with that swing, everything comes into effect. Furniture in front of baseboard is a no-no, all right? So if you have furniture in front of your baseboard and you're not making temperature, that's that's one big help. Couches, big Couches, thing. I mean, I, I, that's the first thing I'm thinking about is the couch in the living room yeah. is you know usually against the wall and it's right in front of the- Absolutely, so temperatures like this, I know it's not gonna look aesthetically nice, pull them out of the way. You know, I was using before, if you have a fan or something, you could blow some air because that's actually how baseboard works. It actually, you know, it's airflow. You know, as much as you don't want to think it is, but it's air pushing across from the bottom of the baseboard and going across the convector and, and making your heat. So that'll help boost up some heat to use. So like putting a little fan on the bottom yeah. of the baseboard to blow. I'm not saying to do that all the time, but when it's yeah, when degrees it... outside and you're desperate, you know, that's an idea you could do. Okay. Um, the other thing you could do is if you haven't cleaned your baseboards and you got pets and dander and whatever else, you know, it's a good idea to take a brush. Don't take your hand because... You will cut your hand that's very thin uh, metal on there and uh, brush the lint off and vacuum it up and that'll help more airflow pass through the convector and get you some more heat um like vacuuming it out or something yeah something like brush that. and vacuum you're gonna have to brush it to get it out okay some of them are really dirty <laughs> those yeah. though if you, i wouldn't even think about uh, taking that taking that apart yeah. um but i think you can because it, it fell pop, right it just yeah. the cover pops right off I mean, like I said, with this kind of temperature, even if you can't get the cover back on, at least get it off, get it, it'll still kind of work. You really do want the cover on, but, uh, you know, it's more important to have it cleaned and free of any lint. Okay. So another reason is why you can't keep it up is the fact that everything comes into play. So not just the baseboard, it's did the original contractor who designed the home put enough baseboard in? That could be a problem. No. You know, if you don't have enough BTUs, even with a non-blocked non-lint piece of baseboard you still could possibly not have enough btus in the room design for those zero degree days so that's a problem the other problem is how old are your windows you know if you got drafty windows and not the glass is insulated too well it's a huge heat loss you're not going to make up you know so if you want to find a drafty spot in the house you know and try to block it maybe put a blanket in front of it just for the day or two that we're going to have the, the inclement weather um, that would be a good idea to help you out because uh, it's a helpless feeling when people call me and, and tell me that, you know, they can't get the house to make up, you know, and there's really nothing I can do. So, you know, um, that's really basically the, the most we can give them. So keep the heat at 70 degrees. Yeah, I would keep it at 70. Keep right. it as high as, you know, I mean, my wife likes it at like 72. Right. I fight her to get it at 70. Right. So we stay at 70, you know, right. and I'm in the heating business for 15 years now. I have a programmable thermostat. I don't even change the program. I leave it at 70 all year, all year long. All so, you know, even the air conditioning season, right. I just leave it at a constant temperature and, you know, I'm sure there's studies out there, but what I find is a, a system that's running at, or your car running at 55 all the time, you're going to get the best gas mileage as opposed to, you know, maybe driving at 30 and then going hundred. Right. That's what your heating system is doing. Right. You know, but definitely, you know, after this cold spells over, you can guys do whatever you want. You know, you don't have to worry about a freeze. But during tonight, I would definitely, when you get home, definitely put it up to 70 and leave it. Check to make sure you don't have a setback control on your thermostat because sometimes, you know, digital thermostats, they have four settings. So they have when you wake, when you leave, when you arrive home, and then when you go to sleep. And people aren't even aware of this. And when you go to sleep, it goes down to 62, which can happen to freeze because it's going to be cold as tonight. Right. So right. that's something you want to check as well. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. So we're keeping the house at 70 degrees. We're going to take a look at the baseboard heating and make sure and, the furniture is away from it. Make sure there's no lint. Um, 
and, and basically if you have any drafty spots of the house, try to get something just to cover it. I mean, it's not going to look aesthetically nice for the night, but it will keep you warm. Keep it warm. At the end of the day, you don't care if you're if you're cold, you'll do anything. Right. And so you know. Right. But that's the other thing people take advantage. When people are cold, they'll pay anything. Right. You know. Oh yeah. You don't, uh, don't want four hundred, seven hundred thousand, whatever. Yeah. I'm you don't want my kids are free. So keep yourself out of it. You know. Like I said, it's no good honest company is going to want to make money off of other people's misfortunes right which is this right and this is not something that would be accounted for in their monthly bills right you know so let's avoid it right you know so follow those steps and that should should help you out pretty good all right so awesome that and proper maintenance of your boiler some people they haven't had their boiler service in five years and they have a problem tonight it's not good <laughs> all right well hopefully you yeah. get through it and then if you did, then then make sure it's it's serviced at that yes. point. Yeah, Take care absolutely. of it. Take care of it so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. And we got some great hit, uh, tips. Um, if you need any more information, we've got links uh, below for uh, you to get in contact with, uh, with Ryan and uh, Ryan Anthony's heating and air conditioning service. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.